So I've been dealing with Bear Creek Arsenal for a while now, and I have multiple offerings from them. I have a pistol, I have a 762 by 39 upper. These two right here, this is a side charger, which I'm going to talk about in this video today, and then I have a uh, 16 inch as well, 16 inch mid-length 556 NATO rear charging standard AR-15. Uh, I wanted to talk on this side charger. I really like their products. I like what they do. It's a good uh, entry level AR-15 to get into. And I've had this side charger for a while and I want to talk more on it because before I really messed with these side chargers, this one in particular, I haven't had much experience with it. I, I, I've messed with them a little bit over the years and I've seen them and I like their simplistic design but I never really got into it. Now that's changed. I really like the side charger from Bear Creek. It's a very simple design. Now I know there are other side chargers that have a left side non-reciprocating handle so that way you can get more something akin to an FAL manual arms and I think that's really cool but uh, I spent a lot of time around AKs so this doesn't bother me having a reciprocating handle on this side. It reminds me of an AK. So to me that's kind of fun. It's very, very simple. It's a very simple design. So what I want to do is just talk about the side charger real quick and go over a few things. And uh, first off, yeah, if you're looking for a side charger, I recommend one. Uh, go to Bear Creek Arsenal. I, I looked at their website today and they still have, they, they have some 5.56 stuff. They have a lot of 6.5 stuff. Uh, they got some 300 blackout stuff. And that's side charging and rear charging as well, the standard uh, design. So check it out. I know their inventory change and fluctuates a lot because especially right, excuse me, especially right now, the um, market, I mean, there's a lot of people buying stuff. So it is what it is. But be sure to check them out. If you're looking for a very simple AR-15 platform, um, no forward assist, no dust cover, none of that. You just want simple and basic. And a, good, a side charger like this is the way to go, in my opinion. Um, first off, the only downside that I see to a side charger is you need to have an Allen key to break it apart. And that's because you need to be able to pull this off in order to take the bolt carrier group out. That's the only downside is you need a tool. So uh, some people can look at that as bad. Um, it, it's, it's one of those, if you're looking to use one of these as a survival rifle, then what I would suggest to counter that is to move this up. get a pistol grip like this that has a storage area and you can put uh, like a little bit of cleaning kit supplies or breakdown supplies and put it in here. That way you can keep an eye on uh, you can keep an eye on your Allen wrench and keep it in a nice secure spot. You don't have to worry about losing it. That way you have something. Along with that, you want to make sure to be able to torque it down good every time you put it back together. I like to use just a little bit of blue Loctite to help it. And one thing to note is after a lot of rounds to check it, because there is a possibility that it could come loose. Um, I think if you torque it down pretty good, that's not going to be an issue unless you put tons of rounds through and you get a lot of heat exchange and all that good stuff because, uh, you know, things as they get hot, they expand and and sometimes that will cause things to loosen up. So just keep an eye on it. Um, if you lose this, it'll still function. You'll just have no way of charging the gun without inserting something in and pulling the bolt back. So in an emergency situation, can it still work? Yeah, it can. Um, it'll just be a pain in the butt to do so. In any case, moving on, the rail on this thing. Very easy rail if you want to swap it out. It's designed, it makes it really easy to swap out the rail and the barrel nut. Um, I haven't, uh, you know, I looked at the barrel nut and I looked at the gas block, low profile gas block, easy to change out. So if you want to change up, if you want to get a key mod or if you want to do a pick rail or just change something, if you want to change the barrel out to a different length, it's really easy to do. Just make sure you have the proper tools so that way you can torque it back to specs um, when you put the new stuff on or if you decide to put these rails back on. Uh, for questions on how do you index this without, um, 
with the right correct of you know, the correct amount of torque and indexing it so that way the rail is still level with the upper receiver. Uh, if anybody has any issues with that, if they change over to different Bear Creek rails or, or, or they do something uh, different, but they have the same setup, you can buy the little barrel nut shim kits. Uh, they sell them online, and I think Bear Creek has them as well. But you can buy them, and that way you can use some shims so that way you can get the correct indexing. Uh, the gas block, it's uh, just held in. On the bottom of the gas block, I see these on a lot of the entry-level AR-15s. Some people may argue that those gas blocks can come loose over time. Yeah, I've seen that before in the past. I used to work with an AR-15 specialty store here in Montana, and you used to see that sometimes. Um, if you don't have them tightened down or whatnot, and after a lot of fire, they can come loose. And if they come loose, it'll cause that gas block to move a little bit, and then you'll lose the gas port, and then it'll start the gun malfunctioning. Um, I haven't incurred any, any problems with these. These aren't extremely heavy use AR-15s, I'll tell you that right now. I don't have the funds to put thousands upon thousands of rounds through them each range visit. If I did, it would be fun to do to see how these hold up. But um, I haven't had any issues as long as these things are torqued correctly. I haven't seen uh, any issues from the Bear Creek ones I have here and I haven't seen any issues overall through the years. Um, as far as using Loctite or anything on them, uh, you could use the high temp stuff, but keep in mind if you use the high temp stuff to lock the bolts in on these type of gas blocks, uh, you're probably not gonna get them undone. Because uh, some of that Loctite stuff, you have to get almost red hot in order to get it to break. And if it's high temp stuff, it's designed for a high temp area. The gas block is a high temp area, so you're gonna have issues. So really think twice if before you do something like that. Um, again, I haven't had any real issues, especially with the Bear Creeks. None of their gas blocks came apart on me. Um, there's just nothing to report on that. So um, with the uh, general reliability, I haven't had any issues shooting cheap ammunition through this thing. I haven't had any issues um, as far as ejection and whatnot. I haven't seen anything super erratic. Of course, this doesn't have the little shell deflector on here so the ejection pattern may be a little bit different for you lefties out there this may cause an issue um, this rifle for a lefty i don't know with the reciprocating bolt that's going to be coming back close to your face and the way the shells eject uh, i'm not sure a side charger if you're a lefty might this type of side charger uh, would be the good answer for you as far as a simple rifle goes um, lack of forward assist well, you can just use this as a forward assist, just slap on the bolt itself. Um, with forward assist, though, I tend to look at if, if you're having to cram the case into the chamber, then you may have another issue. Forward assist is kind of something that, you know, the military AR-15s had them, and they, it was taught, especially after the M16, the M16A1 came out, you know, slapping the forward assist, making sure the shell goes in because of corrosion and dirt and all that stuff in jungle environments. Um, in any environment that you'll see in the U.S., if you're taking care of the AR-15, uh, I don't think you'll have a need for it. Uh, the shell deflector, again, that's the same. In reality, this could be almost kind of a shell deflector because as this reciprocates back and the shell ejects, it may bounce off of this. So this is kind of a multi-use type projection right there. Um, as far as use of the, the bolt release, everything's good on it. Here, I'll flip it over to show you. Um, I haven't had any issues with the bolt release, although I can't really fit any mag hole bad levers or anything. I know I mentioned that in the video before. Uh, the design is just very straightforward. As far as the bolt carrier group itself, it's just like any other uh, BCA bolt carrier group. No issues with it. The staking seems to be good to go. Uh, the extractor and everything seem to be good to go. No real fancy uh, designs for that and no real issues noted. So uh, overall, I really recommend these side chargers they're inexpensive they're straightforward rifles and uh, what i like about them is the manual of arms is just a little bit different than a standard ar-15 that it almost feels like a slightly different rifle 
but I still have the same magazines and all that good stuff, if you get what I'm saying. When you shoot one, you realize it. Kind of a funny thing, I notice that when I pick this up, still, I'm so used to the rear chargers, when I pick it up, the first thing I always do when I pick up a firearm is I clear it. Well, I'm always reaching back here. Uh, I reach back here and there's nothing back here and I have to go, oh crap, yeah, it's a side charger. So, kind of a training issue if you're really familiar with AR-15s, the standard AR-15s. Um, you'll come across that problem and it's kind of funny. But just something to note, something to train out of. So, uh, oh, uh, on the rail for the M-Lock, um, the M-Lock fittings here, everything is nicely specced out. I have not tried the sling points right here. Uh, these I haven't messed with. I've, I've just worked a lot with the M-Lock rails, uh, the, the actual M-Lock fittings, and I put rails on, and in fact, this has a light on it right now. I haven't had any issues with as far as uh, the rails are to spec. Everything is nice and tight, fits well. Uh, the extruding is good. There's no bend in the rail. Everything's nice and straight. So um, with that said, I've got no issues there. So uh, quick little update. Um, I'll stop talking now so that way you can comment and all that good stuff. Feel free to let me know. Again, check out their website and uh, keep an eye on it because their stuff changes. It seems like it changes a lot. I mean, I could probably wait till this afternoon and then check it again and their whole inventory might be changed. They're just, they're, they're selling a lot of stuff and it's for a reason. So um, check them out and feel free to let us know how your experiences is with them and let us know how your stuff is with them in the comment section below so that way people can look at the comments and get a good, well-informed opinion. And with that said, thanks a lot for watching my video, and I hope everyone is staying safe and sane out there.